In the last video, you saw how charge and resonance have powerful effects on the energy of a lone pair, and hence on basicity. And of course, since acidity depends on the stability of an acid's conjugate base, charge and resonance affect acid strengths as well. While charge and resonance are the two most important factors that influence base and acid strength, there are several others. In this video, we'll explore the three effects called atom effects, because they have to do with the atom where a particular lone pair resides. The first atom effect is electronegativity. When we're comparing atoms within the same row of the periodic table, the more electronegative an atom is, the lower in energy or more stable its lone pairs are. Because the more electronegative an atom is, the more tightly it hangs on to its electrons, and the less reactive they are. This means that chloride has more stable lone pairs than hydrogen sulfide, which has more stable lone pairs than dihydrogen phosphide. So Cl- is less basic than Hs-, which is less basic than H2P-. We can apply electronegativity trends to understanding acidity as well. Let's compare the acidity of methane, ammonia, and water. As always, the first step in comparing acidity is to draw the conjugate bases. Here, those are CH3- and H2- and OH-. Then we compare the stability of the lone pairs on those bases. Since oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, and nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, the lone pairs on hydroxide are the most stable of the three, and the lone pair on CH3- is the least stable, and therefore most basic, of the three. So CH4 is the least acidic of these three, and water is the most acidic. The second atom effect is size, which applies when we are comparing atoms within the same column of the periodic table. In general, the larger an atom is, the less basic its lone pairs. The reasons for this are quite complicated, but a simplistic view is that the electron pairs like to be spread out around large atoms, so they tend to be less reactive toward acids. So comparing OH-, SH-, and SEH-, since selenium is the largest of the three atoms, its lone pairs are the least basic. Conversely, these three ions' conjugate acids, water, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen selenide, have these relative acidities. The final at atom effect is hybridization. All other things being equal, lone pairs in sp3 hybrid orbitals are higher in energy than lone pairs in sp2 hybrid orbitals, which are higher in energy than lone pairs in sp hybrid orbitals. The reason for this is that hybridization involves the averaging of different numbers of s and p orbitals including averaging their energies. When an atom's s and all three p orbitals hybridize, the resulting four sp3 hybrid orbitals are at an energy three-fourths of the way from the s orbital energy to the p orbital energy. But when an atom hybridizes its s orbital with just two of its p orbitals, in sp2 hybridization, the three resulting sp2 orbitals are two-thirds of the way from the s orbital to the p orbital energy. And when an atom hybridizes its s orbital with just one p orbital, in sp hybridization, the resulting sp hybrid orbitals are halfway between the energy of the s and p orbitals. And importantly, Lone pairs almost always occupy these hybrid orbitals. 
Differences in lone pair energies due to hybridization explain why amines are more basic than imines, which are more basic than nitriles. The nitrogen lone pairs occupy sp3, sp2, and sp hybrid orbitals, respectively. This trend also explains why terminal alkynes are more acidic than alkenes, which are more acidic than alkanes. Their conjugate bases have lone pairs in sp, sp2, and sp3 orbitals. Lower energy lone pairs in conjugate bases means stronger conjugate acids.